the best underdogs currently fighting in the UFC, and you could already see the number one underdog in the UFC is going to be Bilal Muhammad. There is no doubt about it. In my mind, Bilal Muhammad is the current best man at upsetting Las Vegas, upsetting the sports books, upsetting my predictions. Bilal is that guy. He is on a five fight underdog win streak. He was a favorite against Damian Maya back in 2021. That was the last time the betting odds actually had him winning a fight. Since then, he was a 2-1 to one dog against Stephen Winterboy Thompson. He was an underdog against Luke, dominated both of them. He was a slight underdog against Sean Brady, and he knocked him out. He was a slight underdog against Gilbert Burns. He won all of those rounds. And then he was like a 2.5-1 to one underdog against Leon Edwards and went out there and pretty much destroyed him in round number one, in round number two. And in round number four, of course, Leon had his moments. He had his way with them in round three and had a few good moments in round number five as well. But Bilal Muhammad, to have five fights in a row where he is counted out as the underdog is absolutely remarkable. This dude is by far the number one underdog. And we're going to go through about 10 or more other underdogs that right now are just so, so good at defying the odds and, and going out there and, and putting on great performances when nobody thinks they are going to do so. So the next fighter we are going to go to and talk about is Ayman Zahabi. He's not a huge name. He's not a huge name at all. But he's 11 and 2. He's 36 years old. He's getting a little bit up there in age. But he's on a four fight win streak. A knockout win against Draco Rodriguez. Knockout against Arichi Lang. Upset one of the biggest Bantamweight prospects in Javid Basharat, who was undefeated. And he beat Ricky Tercios. And guess what the odds were on all of those fights? He was a 2 to 1 dog. In the first one, two to one dog against Ricky Tercios, 50 50, but a slight dog yet again against Arichi Lang. And then, oh my freaking God, Javid Basharat was favored at eight to one. Eight to one to go out there and beat Ayman Zahabi. People thought he had like a 12, 13% chance of going out there and getting the win, and he won that fight. Four wins in a row, all as an underdog is absolutely incredible. That is 100% why he is on this list. Next up, Chepe Mariscal. And I'm going to have to go and go ahead and say, the guy that he's fighting is also a great, great underdog. In Damon Jackson, we'll talk about him in a bit, but Chepe is 3-0 in his UFC start, fought Trevor Peak up at lightweight on short notice. He won. He got the finish against Jack Jenkins. A little controversial, and then he won a close one against Morgan Sherrier. But let's take a look at all the odds here. Trevor Peak, he was a plus 130 dog. He kind of dominated that fight, outstruck Trevor Peak for three rounds. He was a two to one dog against Jack Jenkins, got the finish, and he was a slight favorite or slight underdog against Morgan Sherrier as well. Three fights, all of which he's not expected to win, and he goes out there and gets the job done. But now he's going to be the favorite for the first time in his UFC career with Damon Jackson. And I'm going to switch it just to underdogs here for Damon Jackson because this dude also is one of the best underdogs in the UFC right now. He joined the UFC yet again um, back in 2020 as a 3-1 to one underdog and went out there and destroyed Mursad Bektik. Nobody thought he would do that. They thought if he's going to win, probably going to be a split decision. No, bro dominated that fight. Ilya Taporia, I mean, come on. Come on, it's Ilya. He was a dog there, but it doesn't matter. He's it's Ilya Taporia. Danny Ige, same thing. It's Danny Ige. You can't really, you can't really be that good of a dog and fight Danny Ige. It's just not going to go well. And then the Billy Corinthio fight, I believe, was a little bit of a robbery. I kind of thought he won that fight. Beat Pat Sabatini by knockout as a dog and recently beat Alexander Hernandez as a dog. He's kind of even on his dog streak, but again, the only time he's losing um, when he is the underdog is against really, really good guys, champions and top 15 guys. The next guy we're going to talk about... Charles Energy Johnson. This man is the most active fighter in the UFC right now. There's no doubt about it. There is no doubt about it. Since, let's go beginning of 2022. 
beginning of 2022. He joined the UFC after getting his knockout win in the LFA right at the beginning of 2022. Had his first fight in July 2022. What is it right now? July 2024. And my guy has nine fights already in just two years. Let me say that again. He has nine fights in two years in the flyweight division. This is like two-month break, three-month break, two-month break. This dude does not take any time off, and he's actually winning. He's three wins in a row right now in the UFC flyweight division, which is even more incredible. And I'm going to look through his fights in the UFC. Of course, his UFC debut, Muhammad Mokaev, he was the underdog there, and he ended up losing that fight. So be it. All right. That, that's the, that's one, of the, one of the times he was a dog, and he lost. He lost to Rafael Estevam back in 2023 as a slight dog. Just got out-wrestled, out-grappled. But since then, my guy has become one of the best underdogs in the UFC currently. Because when those odds came out for him and Jake Hadley, Charles Johnson was a really, really good underdog. Uh, and he was plus money at the time. He went out there and destroyed Jake Hadley on the feet for three rounds. Azat Maksum was a three and a half to one favorite. He went out there and outstruck Azat, who was an undefeated Kazakh prospect. And he destroyed him. And then Josh Van, also a big favorite, two and a half to one. And he went out there and knocked him out out in three rounds the jake hadley one right now it says he's not the underdog on here but i remember betting on um on charles johnson as a slight underdog so that's three underdog wins in a row for energy johnson and he, he already says he has another fight coming up with sumu darji in the ufc flyweight division i believe in october again how is he being this active he just fought in July. Now it's going to be July, August, September, October. Another three-month turnaround. Absolutely crazy. But I'm assuming maybe he'll be the dog there again and we could get another four dog wins in a row for energy. That'd just, that'd just be insane. John Silva, ladies and gentlemen, you might not know it. This guy has been the dog in the majority of his UFC fights. Weston Wilson in his UFC debut. Obviously, bro is a humongous humongous favorite but after that once he started to get fed to the wolves a little bit had a really big step up in competition in his second fight in the ufc slight underdog there tapology was pre predicting jordan to win i wasn't i had john silva winning this one um but he went out there and destroyed charles jordan with the uppercut when charles has never been knocked out and he did that as an underdog in his second fight in the ufc then he fought drew dober and these odds were basically 50 50 some betting on sites had dober as the dog some of them had john silva i count it it was a 50 50 fight um and he went out there and as a 50 50 fight it should be really close right no my guy went out there and destroyed drew dober everywhere that fight went with the kicks with the elbows with the punches cut him open badly and he got another tko both as really really close fights i don't think he's going to be the dog anymore for any of his future fights but my gosh has he looked good being the dog against drew dober and charles jordan that's two dog wins in a row for john Silva. The next one, we just bet on him. If you're a, if you were a channel member, uh, you saw me put a hundred dollars on Gregory Rodriguez as the underdog. You saw me put fifty dollars on Gregory Rodriguez by a decision, which cashed as well, which was kind of crazy. Um, and he's three uh, three wins in a row right now in the UFC. Overall, he's seven and two inside of the UFC, and he has a lot, a lot of knockouts but he's been doubted a lot in the ufc he was an underdog uh, against christian leroy duncan in this last fight he was able to go out there and not lose a single minute of that fight 30 27 dominated again if you're the underdog you should be if you're gonna win it should be by a close decision uh you should barely etch it out or something he dominated it three rounds to get that unanimous decision uh chidi and joe kawani this one he was a slight underdog as well and he showed his heart he showed his toughness he showed his resilience uh and, and came back late in that fight after a really rough round one but showed how much of a dog an underdog that he really is and got the takedown tko chidi in round number two and then the last one the last one right here. Dusko Todorovic, short notice, his UFC debut, does the same thing. 30 27s 
as a dog. So he's 30 27 in two of his underdog wins, and he's getting a knockout win in the other one. This dude is 3 0 in the UFC as an underdog. Every time he's the dog, I have predicted him to win. So if he's a dog again for his next fight, which has to be in the top 15, put your money on Robocop because he's undefeated when he is doubted. Next one we do have is Nicholas Dalby. 23 wins, 5 losses, and 1 drawn. I'm going to come out right now and say it. He just lost as an underdog to Renat Fakhradinov. This is very, very true. He went out there, and I believe it was a split decision or a majority decision. It was a split decision. But if we're looking at what the odds were, minus 400 for Renat, plus 300 for Nicholas Dalby, and you're telling me that Nicholas Dalby is not a good dog when he made that close of a fight as a 4-1 to one underdog. That's insanely impressive. And that alone could probably get him on this underdog list, making that fight that close. But the fight right before that, Gabriel Bonfim, undefeated, up-and-coming jiu-jitsu guy, um, 3-0 and in the UFC at the time, all finishes. And what does my man Nicholas Dalby do? He weathers the storm and knocks out the 5-1 to one favorite at the end of the second round craziness the fight before that muslim salikov he was almost a three to one underdog went out there outstruck muslim on the feet and won the decision before that warley alves not that big of an underdog here but he was able to get the win on the scorecards as well before that he was the underdog again tim means versus nicholas dalby i'm gonna i'm gonna say it right now because you might be like oh well, he's lost another underdog fight. No, that was a freaking robbery. He clearly won that fight against Tim Means. Landed the more effective strikes. I believe landed more volume as well. I don't know how. He wasn't gifted that decision. Before that, though, Daniel Rodriguez, 3-1 to one underdog again. All of these times, he's a humongous underdog. He's able to win these really, really close fights uh, and even get the finish like Gabriel Bonfim. Beat D-Rod as a 3-1 to one favorite, and he beat, back in 2019, Alex Oliveira as an underdog. So he's 5-2 and two as an underdog in the UFC with one of the ones he lost being a split decision and the other one, in my eyes, being quite a robbery. Nicholas Dalby is one of the best underdogs I have ever seen. Bro is very good when he is doubted. Next one we do have is going to be Denise Gomez, 24 years old, nine wins, three losses. You might not know a lot about her, but she's doing really, really good as an underdog recently. She was um, a two to one underdog against undefeated Eduardo Mora in her last fight just a month ago and went out there, looked really, really good defending the takedowns and outstriking Eduardo Mora. Nobody really gave Denise a chance because Eduardo is this undefeated girl. She's dominating everyone inside of the UFC. And what does Denise do? She goes out there and she dominates that fight on the feet. Before that one, she was the favorite against Angela Hill. So every time she's been the favorite, she has lost. But before that, Three and a half to one underdog again. I can see another undefeated prospect from Mexico who a lot of people thought could be a future champion. And what does she do? She knocks out Yasmin Jaragui in 20 freaking seconds. I can't even make this up. She goes out there as a three and a half to one dog and knocks her out. Before that, slight underdog against Bruna Brazil. I mean, oh my gosh. She's three and one as an underdog in the UFC. Two of those dog wins being knockout wins, which is crazy. And then the other one being against an undefeated Eduardo Mora. She is very, very good again. Like a lot of these fighters, when she is doubted, she does very good things. Next one we do have is Diego Ferreira. Now I'm gonna say it right now. Diego, I believe, is six and four in the UFC as an underdog. But if we're gonna if we're gonna look at these underdog wins and losses, um, we have to kind of consider who he's losing as a dog too. As a dog, he's only lost to Mateusz Gamrot, a top five UFC lightweight, Benil Dariush, a former top five UFC lightweight, Gregor Gillespie, a former top 10 UFC lightweight, and Dustin Poirier, a former interim champion. Those are the only times that Diego Ferreira has ever lost when he's doubted, when he's the underdog going into a fight. Other than that, Two to one underdog against a two time PFL champion goes out there, unanimous decision. Jared Gordon, he goes out and knocks out Jared in one round as a two and a half to one underdog. Rustam Kabilov, 
as a slight dog gets the win. Meyerbeck Taisumov as a two and a half to one underdog gets the win. Anthony Pettis, former UFC champion, he was a two and a half to one dog, goes out there, dominates the fight, and submits Anthony Pettis. And then, of course, most recently, the main reason I'm going to have him on this list, four to one underdog against one of the bigger prospects that light, light, that lightweight division had at the time. He goes out there, weathers round number one. It was a pretty close round. Round two, he dominates Rebecca. Round three, he makes Rebecca bleed. He makes his face distorted and, and colored differently. And he starts ground and pounding the heck out of the four to one favorite. Again, if you're going to win one of these fights, it's got to be close, right? No. Diego Ferreira goes out there, dominates round two, dominates round three, and finishes him off with ground and pound with nine seconds left. This dude is a D-A-W-G and a D-O-G underdog because he gets it, he gets it done all the time against these up-and-coming prospects. So, yeah, Diego Ferreira, wow. Next one we do have is going to be Chase Hooper. This one isn't really, I mean, the, the farther we get down the list, we're not going to have guys that are like 4-0 in the UFC as an underdog, but... Chase Hooper is still very good as a dog. He's coming off a slight underdog win against Vyacheslav Borshev, where, I mean, it was a 50-50 fight, but most odds uh, makers did have him as the slight dog. And what does Chase Hooper do? He dominates that fight. He takes him down over and over and over again, even knocks down the kickboxer in Vyacheslav Borshev. And then he's able to submit him with a Bravo choke in round number two. Uh, he beat Nick Fiore as well, dominantly. I mean, I don't know how he was the underdog going into that, but that was his UFC lightweight debut. Goes out there, does really, really good and gets the unanimous decision. Felipe Calares, I believe that was one of his last fights at 145 pounds. And he goes out there as the dog. Everyone thought Felipe is going to defend the takedowns, outstrike him. He takes him down and he ground and pounds the heck out of him. Gets the third round finish. Other fights in the UFC is the favorite. He's the favorite. He's the favorite. And then his UFC debut, he's the underdog. Daniel Taymor goes out there in his debut and knocks him out as the dog. So if you're if you're counting, let's uh let's filter it to just underdogs. He is 3-0 in the UFC as an underdog. 3-0. And, oh. and again, the Vyacheslav Borshev fight was 50-50 on most betting odd sites. So if you want to count that one as well, he was the underdog on most of them. So he's technically 4-0 in the UFC as an, under, as an underdog. Just crazy, crazy from... Um, from Chase Super right there. Next one we do have, this one's a little bit uh, of recency bias. His last two wins have both been as the underdog. He was two to one, um, not favored to win against Gabriel Santos, goes out there, gets the knockout win in round two. Jonathan Pierce, nobody really thought he was going to win because Jonathan had been looking really good in the UFC featherweight division. He was a former top 15 guy. And what does David Onama do? He defends a lot of the takedowns, keeps it on the feet, and just looks really, really impressive. So that's two dog wins in a row for David Onama with his only underdog loss inside of the UFC being his UFC debut here against Mason Jones as a three and a half to one underdog when he's going up a weight class. That was it. When he's not going up the weight class, when he's staying in his natural weight class, he's undefeated when he is doubted. And last but not least, we got two more. Never mind. So not last but not le least. But I had to kind of put these in here as kind of kind of honorable mentions because Chris Padilla just joined the UFC this year on short notice against James Lontop as a 4-1, to 5-1 to one dog on most bookies. 94% of people were predicting James Lontop to win that fight and he goes out there, gets the upset, heavy, heavy underdog he was and gets the win. In round number one by finish, I just had to kind of include him. And then Man on Fiora, she's been the favorite six fights in a row to start her UFC career. Obviously, I mean, she's very, very good. She's a favorite in all of those. But then her most recent fight with Aaron Blanchfield, she was a two to one underdog. Everyone thought Aaron Blanchfield was going to dominate her with the wrestling and things like that. Take the fight down and Manon was just not going to be able to do anything. Instead, Manon literally 50-45 as a two to one underdog. So that's about it. Uh, I mean, some of these ones only had a few examples, but a lot of them are like four and oh, five and oh in the UFC. A lot of three and oh guys as underdogs in the UFC. So many impressive names I just mentioned on there. Some of them, you might have no idea who they even are because they're just, 
just random guys in the UFC, but a few of them uh, definitely have what it takes to be future contenders uh, and challengers in their specific weight classes. So thank you guys for watching this video. Those are my favorite underdogs right now inside of the UFC. Make sure to like and subscribe, of course, and check out that pinned comment down below because Abu Dhabi bets for Corey Sanhagen, Umar Namagamedov, they're already out. We already got some money lines. We got some parlays and things like that. So check that link down below and we'll see you in the next one.